Welcome to another OCD Recovery Instagram Live. Been a little while since I've been on here, so I thought I'd come on and uh, do a few questions and answers uh, covering different topics relating to OCD. Uh, so anything you want to ask, please uh, just post that in the comments below and I will cover that now. Uh, what was I going to talk about to start with? I had a, I had a message that I was going to... Ah, I was going to talk a little bit about the thoughts are, uh, thoughts are thoughts quote, which I often can't cover on here, which is basically where what happens is in my own journey and a lot of people's journeys, you go from sort of therapist to therapist who often doesn't have a good understanding of OCD. And so they often say, thoughts are thoughts. Uh, just leave thoughts there. Make peace with thoughts. They've got no reference to you, which is a vital point, and it's an important point to see the thinking and to 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 understand what how it how it's there, but not to get so involved in it. So you're kind of creating a distance there, which is an important principle to understand in your OCD recovery journey. However, what happens is there's not enough information given in reference to that point. So the individual then goes around a cycle of sort of trying to show themselves all the time that OCD is just uh, OCD is just th th these thoughts and they're not them and they're separate to them and so on. But the only problem with that is they come unstuck when a situation arises in life. For example, they have a real health concern or a nasty event happens in life that they weren't ready for. And the only tool they've got are thoughts are thoughts and that's, and, and that's all there is to OCD, which doesn't sort of bring a state of peace because your brain will be just going, there's a real threat here. So without a good understanding of the principles laid out by the founder of CBT, Albert Ellis, of unconditional self, life and other acceptance, it's very difficult to, to, to create, a, create peace internally, so an absence of chronic anxiety, when you think that you are imminently in danger or have done something that's going to mean that in your perception uh, you are guilty forever and you, are, you have done some wrongdoing that's written you off, uh, is that kind of situation that causes a big problem in thinking. Um, and then, then the person is left with chronic anxiety because they're, they're so terrified of having acted in that way or they're so terrified that they've done something uh, that, that, that's caused a certain element of harm to somebody or there's an existential threat coming in some form. All, all different variations that OCD will, will, will latch into. So I think it's very important to have an understanding of that. Uh, the other thing is it, 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 the, the sufferer will often feel lost at that point because they will think the, the therapist doesn't get it and they will also think that other people have recovered with those things. I mean, I tried a great deal of mindfulness when I was suffering from sensory motor OCD and harm OCD and the anxiety just cut through it like a knife, through a, like a hot knife through butter. It just wouldn't subside. So it's very important to be uh, to really think about uh, what it is you're, you're frightened of and learn to change your perception of that fear. Anyone who works with me, they will say that that was one of the biggest game changers, the biggest realizations they had, because everyone is in that position. Uh, OCD, unless you have OCD, uh, not, not everyone, some people have a sort of a, a lighter f f sort of OCD or anxiety suffering where they haven't had to need to get so deep under their beliefs. But usually most people uh, are stuck at that point. So anyone who's worked with me will say that that was a game-changing moment, finding the works of Albert Ellis and then working through it. Because you can't just apply Ellis alone with OCD. You have to have an understanding of sort of mindfulness, uh, not mindfulness, of, of, of creating distance with the thoughts, as well as a great understanding of OCD and how it operates. Because if you just try to bolt down unconditional self-life and other acceptance on anything you're scared of, you'd be getting quite stuck because what happens is your OCD is going to keep morphing. It's going to keep changing. It's going to keep moving around. So you need to understand a bit about how that is and when to, to make decisions, when not to make decisions, when to put your foot on the gas, when to take your foot off the gas, how OCD operates, how it latches, how it releases, different things. It's quite a lot. And what, what I sort of provide in, with, with all the things I do, both in coaching and on, on these accounts and resources that I run, is giving people a really in-depth understanding of OCD so they really understand what it's about, how, why they're suffering the way they're suffering, what their, what their thought is, how that would latch in, what kind of things it's gripping to. Why, for example, existential 
OCD is always gripping to creating a disconnect with the loved ones and family around. So it's that kind of stuff. I'm not actually going to have time to do a question and answers today. I'm sorry. I will do the question and answers in uh, next Instagram Live because I've got a meeting soon. But um, I think that it's very important to notice that because a lot of people, they're not aware of what their anxiety is trying to tell them or what it's what the fear is. Often it's feeling disconnected from a loved one. <clears throat> often it's feeling disconnected from other humans. Um, it can be a fear of, of, of dying. It can be a fear of being uh, so rejected by everybody that nobody likes you or supports you. Uh, so you're isolated by society. Again, a fear of disconnection, but sort of a more uh, not being able to be happy. Often that's one that's, that's linked in, not being able to be happy uh, ever again. That's often a very, very common fear. Let me see if I can do some of these questions quickly. One second. Sexual orientation OCD. If you go into the Facebook group, it's a good free resource that I run. Um, you can ask all those kind of questions in there. People help you with those. False memories is basically where you start checking and you're scared that what if there's something, because you can't change the past, you can only change the future. OCD likes that, so it will often go into the past and it will specifically look for that thing in the past that you're scared of. And uh, and then it will sort of implant that, what if that actually happened? Oh no, I can't get certainty on that, it's gone. Maybe it did, and then it will just morph that. And it can create any situation. It can, the situation's got to be, be no reference to the thing that you, you were initially concerned about. If someone's scared they did something at 10 years old, it will say, at, at, at older age, it will keep adjusting the age more and more. So it's, it's gonna do that. That's the nature of it. It's constantly trying to adjust to get into the scary position that you fear. Compulsive apologising, you've got to stop. You've got to stop that. It's not going to get you anywhere. Constantly apologising to people is just is a vicious cycle. Uh, That's a reassurance compulsion and uh, it's not going to lead to recovery. How can you accept to be not liked? Well, a lot of people and a lot of celebrities, for example, get into positions where they're not liked. Uh, it's not their end of their life. Uh, they learn to accept that they're not going to be liked. A lot of people that are successful in anything tend to not be liked because of all the situations that arise in relation to them being in that position. So you've got to get used to that in life. You know, Trying to get liked all the time is a never-ending cycle of, of being disappointed because uh, if you can accept yourself unconditional and you're not constantly people-pleasing and trying to chase being accepted, it's a never-ending sort of nightmare cycle where you'll never get relief. Solopsism OCD, if you check out our existential um, YouTube, my existential YouTube video um, on the YouTube page, uh, you'll see one on existential, which specifically goes into solipsism as it's one of the main, most popular topics. Uh, so so, so it, it, it usually when people suffer from existential, it, it tends to latch onto solipsism because of that not wanting to be connect not wanting to be uh not wanting to be connected with um the fear of not being connected with your loved ones being in this world that's separate everyone's robots or whatever you can't interact that that's the core fear there How to work through OCD regarding being afraid your boyfriend is a sexist. All those sort of sexual related questions, you can ask that in the Facebook group. It's a private group. Uh, there's some really great people in there. The moderators that are in there uh, have a really good knowledge of OCD. So you can ask those questions. They're, they're in there every day helping out. Um, those are all really common questions. Um, what was that? How to go studying whilst having breathing OCD? Well, look, even with breathing OCD, you're always going to breathe. Your body's going to remember it. So you, you've got to go about bringing it for the ride, not trying to eliminate it and get your breathing right. Once you start trying to control your breathing, it's like your heart rate. Suddenly your breathing 
will, will, will ramp up. Suddenly your heart, if you try, if you're scared of feeling your heartbeat, your heart's going to beat out your chest. So that's naturally what's going to happen with these things. So you want to, you, you want to bring it for the ride and leave these processes to happen in the body. All right. If you concentrate on it, that's okay. Leave that to happen. Don't be too concerned about that. But you need to bring it for the ride. Don't wait to try and get it fixed because that's what's causing the cycle there. Um, all right, guys, I'll be on the next one of these soon. I will be doing these at scheduled times soon, so you'll be able to see when I'm on doing these Instagram lives and what topics I will be doing before I do them. Uh, so you can organize your questions before in relation to that topic. Um, I think that covers everything that I wanted to ask you today. I will see you guys on the next Instagram live. See you later.